Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, Fielding English. Okay. Hello everyone, again, now we are live also on Instagram. So tell me in the comments, where are you from? We are going to talk about Cinco de Mayo. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. So, welcome to our special Cinco de Mayo English podcast and English channel where I'm Maria, as you may, not, you may know, I'm Maria, and I'm thrilled to be here with my husband, Eric. We hope today's topic will enlighten you about wonderful cultural traditions and motivate you to continue your English journey. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so as I mentioned, we are diving into the vibrant and exciting world of Cinco de Mayo, a holiday celebrated with joy and pride by millions around the globe. That's right, Maria. Cinco de Mayo isn't just about parties and tacos. It's a day with deep historical significance for Mexico and the whole world. <laughs> Absolutely, Eric. Cinco de Mayo commemorates the Mexican army's victory over French for over French forces in the Battle of Puebla on May 5th. 1862. And while it's often mistaken for a Mexican Independence Day, which is actually in September, Cinco de Mayo is still a day of immense pride for Mexicans everywhere. That's so true. It's a day to honor the bravery and re resilience of the Mexican people, especially President Benito Juarez. Do I say that, guys? Our <laughs> Spanish speakers here is Juarez or Juarez. What is the name? <laughs> and the soldiers who fought against incredible odds. And as we celebrate this historic event on May 5th, it's also a time to embrace Mexican culture and traditions. From delicious foods like tacos and guacamole to lively music like mariachi bands. There's so much to enjoy. And let's not forget about the colorful decorations like piñatas and uh, zarapes. zarapes. I actually, uh, piñatas, I haven't heard about it, but not zarapes. That's um, the add to the festive atmosphere. Plus, who can resist a refreshing drink on Cinco de Mayo? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But beyond the fiestas and fun, Cinco de Mayo is also a time to reflect on the importance of unity and solidarity, especially in the face of adversity. That's a great point, Maria. And by learning about the history and cultural significance of Cinco de Mayo, we can all come together to celebrate and appreciate the rich tapestry of Mexican heritage. Um, yes, yeah, so whether you are enjoying a fiesta, <laughs> fiesta, so in Portuguese we'd say festa, but in Spanish, fiesta. Fiesta with friends or simply talking, taking a moment to reflect we hope this podcast, this live lesson, uh, inspire you to embrace the spirit of Cinco de Mayo with joy. So let's get started learning 25 words related to Cinco de Mayo and the Mexican culture. Eric, What's the first word? <laughs> the first word is Cinco de Mayo. So let's not forget that is it's a Mexican holiday commemorating the Mexican army's victory over French forces at the Battle of Puebla on May 5th, 1862. So the second word is Battle of Puebla. 
So that's the official name of the battle fought on that day, May 5th, 1862, in the city of Puebla, Mexico, in which the Mexican army defeated the French forces. The next word is Mexico. Mexico. Well, Mexico is the country where Cinco de Mayo originated and is primarily celebrated Although the United States also celebrates the holiday. So uh, the fourth word is the guy's name. one famous Mexican singer associated with Cinco de Mayo is, what is his name? Vincente Fernandez. He's known as the king of ranchera music. Fernandez is a beloved icon in Mexican music particularly within the genre of ranchera, which is closely tied to Mexican culture and tradition. And the next word we have is the French intervention in Mexico. Uh, so this it was a period in Mexican history from 1861 to 1867, when France attempted to establish a monarchy in uh, Mexico. So that was the French intervention in Mexico. Now let's just go back a little bit because I think this is a great word. Uh, just uh, it's about what my husband just said was uh, we are talking about the music, okay, this Mexican singer. And then he said that is a particular, uh, what did he say? Genre, right? Gen genre. Genre. So do you have another way to say this word or? You could say style. So genre means style. And then we write like G-E-N-R-E, -E, right? So it's like genre, genre. you say genre, yes. right? Okay, so now the f six, number six, the word number six is a name, okay? So it's Benito Juarez or Juarez. Yes, Benito Juarez. He was the president <laughs> of Mexico during the time of this battle, which was called the Battle of Puebla, and he was a key figure in Mexican history. Wow. <laughs> now, really important. independence is an important word. So independence is, uh, means, like Cinco de Mayo is often mistakenly, um, is a mistaken thought to celebrate Mexican Independence Day which is actually on set September 16th. So here's the thing. So we celebrate Cinco de Mayo, okay, which was the, uh, the battle, okay, when they won, they mm -hmm. fought the battle uh, with France. And then Independence Day for Mexican is on September 16th. Okay, so just that's a common mistaken thought uh, to celebrate Mexican Independence Day and then also Cinco de Mayo. They are in different dates, okay? The word number, number eight is mariachi, mariachi. Yes, and a mariachi is a traditional Mexican musical group that typically consists of violins, trumpets, guitars, and sometimes a harp, although I, we want to mention that it's a large guitar, which is called a guitarron. <laughs> yeah, I love that guitarron. <laughs> okay, so what is the number nine so is? So the next word is sombrero. Oh, sombrero is a traditional Mexican wide uh, hat. So often associated with Cinco de Mayo celebration. So the next word is... Tacos, tacos. Tacos, I love tacos. Tacos are a traditional Mexican dish consisting of a tortilla, which can oh be corn goodness. or flour, and is folded or rolled around a filling, typically made with meat, beans, cheese, and vegetables. Wow, sounds really and delicious. And on tacos, you sometimes put our next word, number 11, which is Guacamole. Guacamole, a dip made from mashed avocados, typically mixed with chopped onions, tomatoes, chili peppers, and lime juice. Yeah, I love guacamole. So the next word is salsa. Salsa. Salsa is great on tacos too. And what is salsa? Well, 
It's a spicy sauce, or it can be mild, made primarily from tomatoes, onions, chili peppers, and cilantro. And it's commonly used as a condiment in many types of Mexican dishes. So our next word is tequila. <laughs> tequila. Tequila is a distilled alcoholic beverage made from the blue uh, agave. Uh, what is the name agave? of this? Agave plant. So it's it's this plant, ag agave plant, primarily produced in the area surrounding the city of Tequila, Mexico. So there is a city called Tequila. So that's what the name comes from. And the next word is margarita. Margarita and margaritas <laughs> include tequila. So what is a margarita? It's a cocktail with this tequila, which we just talked about. Triple sec and lime or lemon juice. And is often served with salt around the rim of the glass. Wow. So before we, we uh, continue... Uh, I'd like you guys to write in the comments what is the the food, what type of food, Mexican food that you like the most. Okay, what from we are now in the thirteen no thirteen word, mm -hmm. so we are also talking about the food. So just write down with Mexican, which Mexican food do you like the most? And give a special thumbs up if you love margaritas <laughs> with tequila. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I don't drink it. So. We don't drink those. But. Yeah, but I do love tacos, guacamole. So those are my my preference. So the next uh, word is oh, uh, uh, pin piñata, and your your definition. Oh, uh, piñata, piñata. So do we say in in English? Do we say piñata or like like piñata, like with D sound or T sound? We would say piñata, in English it would be piñata, but if we're talking in Spanish, we'd say piñada. Oh, piñata, okay. So, uh, a decorated container filled with candies and toys, traditionally bro broken up during celebrations such as Cinco de Mayo. Kids love to play piñata. Okay, number, let's go to the next word, which is fiesta, fiesta. Fiesta, so that's a Spanish word, which many of us know, which means party or celebration. And it's often used to describe Cinco de Mayo celebrations. <laughs> okay. And our next word, number 17, is chili peppers. Chili peppers, spicy peppers commonly used in Mexican cuisine to add heat and flavor to dishes. I don't like much spicy foods, but I know Mexicans love spicy food. So thumbs up for you guys, for Mexicans. <laughs> okay, let's go to our next word, which is Dia de los Muertos. Oh, we love Dia de los Muertos. Dia de los Muertos is a Mexican holiday celebrated on November 1st or 2nd to honor deceased loved ones. And you can learn more about it in that wonderful Disney film, Coco. Oh, yeah, that's a really beautiful movie. So now let's uh, introduce the Mexican flag. So the flag of Mexico consisting of three vertical stripes, green, white, and red, with the national coat of arms uh, and uh, the center of the white stripe. So it's a beautiful flag as well. Now the um, word number 20, right? which is, um, I don't know what is that actually, zarape. Zarape or serape. Yeah, so I actually, I have never heard about that. So it's new for me. Well, it's a Mexican blanket. So it's a colorful woven Mexican blanket, blanket often worn as a shawl or a poncho. Oh, poncho, okay. So it's zarape or yes. serape, okay. And the next word we have uh, is is Corona. It's a pop popular uh, brand of Mexican beer, often associated with Cinco de Mayo celebrations. So Corona. And the next word is do we say churros or... Churros. 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 Yes. 
churros. So churros are fried dough pastries, often dusted with cinnamon sugar, very popular in Mexico and other Spanish-speaking countries. Churros. Oh, okay. So in, we also have this in Brazil, but we call churros. Churros. Oh, churros. Yes. Of course, yes. So, uh, so we, but in, then in, we would say over here in the United States, we'd hear us ch churros, right? Churros. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's a new word I hadn't learned about before, um, but we will introduce now. It's called the Dia del Niño. Okay, so the Dia del Niño is uh, a Mexican holiday celebrated on April 13th, 30th. So, April 30th, we have just celebrated because today is May 2nd, right? So, to honor and appreciate children. Dia, Dia del Niño. And then we also have the next word, which is? Reenactment. So reenactments are some of the Cinco de Mayo celebrations include reenactments of the Battle of Puebla to commemorate the famous and historic event. And so the last word we have today is Bien. folklore. Oh, folklore. Okay. Uh, folklore, Cinco de Mayo is rich with cultural and historical folklore. Uh, that is celebrated through various traditions, music, and art. We also we we do have the same in in Brazil, so what we call folklore. <laughs> oh, you see folk. And can you repeat the word in uh, in uh, in English? Folklore. Folklore. Okay, so that's all the time we have for today. Uh, for just to talk about these words, we have a little bit more time. If you guys have some questions, we can answer some questions that related to Cinco de Mayo uh, words, or if you want us to repeat words, how do do people say here in the United States? Even though it is uh, Mexican, so it's Spanish words, but the way that people say here in the United States. It's slightly different sometimes, so we can we are open now. So you guys feel free to drop on the comments here your your uh, comments or your questions. Okay, let me just wave for over here to a couple of people. Welcome again, some mm -hmm. of the new people. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to be here a little bit more just in case you guys have questions okay any questions so far cinco de mayo oh hello yes the, uh, my, yes. my friend yeah english many land. people are commenting they're they're <laughs> saying hi they're they're uh, appreciate all your warm waves and hearts <laughs> go out there and celebrate cinco de mayo it's in a few days it's great to see you too thank you for joining us Okay, any questions? <laughs> we gave you a lot of information, but you can send us questions even after the live broadcast. We're happy to answer them. Oh, for sure. And there are even people joining us right now, although we are almost in the end. But drop your comments. Oh, she said, my pleasure. In Mexico, Cinco, uh, what did she say here? Cinco is the Battle of Pueblo. That's right. We yes. talked about that a few minutes ago. So That's thanks, correct. Thanks yeah. the uh, reinforcement and the reminder. Yeah, so a battle uh, fought on May 5th in, um, of 1862. Yes, yes, the Battle of Puebla. And Puebla... And of word. course, Mexican army defeated the French forces. So they won. Okay. Okay, from Azerba Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, what is the we say? Azerbaijan? Jean. Ah, yes, Azerbaijan. Okay, hi, <laughs> nice having you here. Okay, so we are gonna wrap up then. Um, we'll be back with more insights and celebrations next time. Um, so that's it for today. Until then, happy Cinco de Mayo. And um, remember, it's about immersion, not perfection. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.